so great to know we have some wonderful people helping kids right here in our own community. So now the Assistance League of Nashville is one great way to help young people. But now we're going to talk to somebody else who helps young people in Nashville in a different capacity. John Midgley, he's the supervisor of Child Youth Crisis Services. Now, what is that? It's a mobile crisis unit that focuses on individuals from ages 0 to 17. We are able to see these youths and families in their homes, in their schools, perhaps police will call us, juvenile detention centers, hospital emergency rooms. For instance, there was a call where I saw a young man who was actually on probation for attempted murder, and he wouldn't talk to anyone. He's being court-ordered to see a crisis counselor. He doesn't want to talk to this person. What is he doing here? He doesn't know anything about me. He's here to judge me. He's here to do all those things. And we do have special counselors, including myself, who are trained specifically in this area. So how do you get a kid like that to talk? How do you figure out what's going on beneath the surface? Sometimes you have to think outside of the box. And so what I did is I pulled out a deck of cards, and I fanned them. I started playing with them, and he's paying attention. I'm not saying a word. And I'm able to talk about how cards are something that we play with every day, but people play games, they don't really understand the depth of what a deck of playing cards entails. And if this kid probably thinks I'm crazy and just doesn't want to hear about it. And I start talking, I was like, did you know that there's 52 cards in the deck? The same number of weeks that there are in a year. There's also four suits to a deck, just the same amount of seasons we have in a year. There's also the color red and black in the deck, which is for day and night. And the strangest thing is that if you add all of the numbers up together, and the jack is 11, queen is 12, king is 13, that adds up to 364. You add one for the joker, that's 365, same number of days in the year. And this kid goes, why are there two jokers? And I said, why do you think that would be 366? And he says, leap year. And suddenly we're talking because we have deferred his issues onto a simple deck of playing cards. And it's no longer about him. We're able to displace his problems and talk about what's on the table, literally putting your cards on the table to figure out what's going on beneath the surface. I want to hear that he's progressing. I actually got to see this young man. This is a pretty amazing story. This is my pre-crisis work. I think this is why I'm in the position that I'm in because of my experience in handling these really super difficult cases. And I think that's why I'm in charge. But I worked with this young man for a while and he returned home, went to school. There was a big fight in this school, and he didn't engage this kid that was on probation for attempted murder. There's a huge fight in school. He doesn't engage, and he got pretty beat up. And I asked him, why didn't he defend himself? And realized that we'd been using card magic, sleight of hand magic, as part of his therapy, part of his cognitive behavioral therapy, so that he had something positive to do And he said that he didn't want to hurt his hands. That if he got in a fight, he might hurt his hands and he wouldn't be able to do magic anymore. And I thought that was super powerful that these hands that once tried to kill somebody else are now made for making magic. That's a great story. A true story. And that's just one example of something that we get to do. It's important to know that we also have a walk-in center now at the Mental Health Cooperative. And this is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, holidays included. The first time this has ever happened. People can come in, they can see a crisis counselor, and we can help get them to where they need to be so that they can have a successful future so, so things can improve. So what does it mean to be in crisis? Being in crisis can look like having thoughts about harming themselves, can have thoughts about harming other people. Also can be psychosis, where they're responding to hallucinations. But for kids, it's a little different because they can also exhibit extreme erratic behavior. So maybe extreme violence, running away from the home, all of these things that put those kids at risk where they need to be seen right away so that they can be implemented into some kind of outpatient or maybe even inpatient services so that those symptoms can subside and that they can have a safer, better quality of life. And a better outcome after that situation. Absolutely. So nobody gets hurt, so no lasting damage is done. Right. Now, you said something about it gives you a chance to see them in their homes Why is that important? Well, when a crisis is taking place, it's hard for those kids or families to move from where they're at. 
So we want to see them in their environment. Perhaps one of the triggers of the crisis might be something, some kind of stimulus in the home. It allows us to see the family dynamic. So if the home is set up in such a way, it might even be further environmental. It might be the neighborhood. There might be other situations. We might see a young man that is expressing thoughts about wanting to harm himself. And this young man might say he might be living with a foster family. And his concern is that the people in his house might be at danger. So by talking and delving deeper, getting a better picture as to why those things are happening, and it might come out that this individual is involved in gang activity, and he's, his life has been threatened, and as opposed to putting this foster family at risk, he feels that if he takes his own life, then things will be better. Do so, kids actually have to face situations like that? Absolutely. That specific situation of gang activity, I would say that we probably see at least once every two weeks. Oh my gosh. I had no idea. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't have any idea about the situations that kids are up against these days. Absolutely. And it's changed a lot throughout the course of the last couple decades with the implementation of the internet. Social networking is a huge factor. So where we saw kids maybe having issues at school and being bullied at school suddenly carries over and continues even when they're home. So they're never safe and everybody's got a phone or some recording device and that might be uploaded to YouTube. So some embarrassing moment might be perpetuated and play over and over again. And kids' frontal lobes are still developing. So that's the logic centers of the brain. So they don't have the capacity that an adult does to understand and deal with these types of situations, to know that there's a future, to know that, that things go past that immediate emotion. And that puts kids at a higher risk than adults in terms of impulsivity. Meaning what? Meaning that a young person who can't foresee the future and is trapped in the moment, the emotional moment, might be more likely to do something to harm themselves or take their lives. And kids also, given that their brains are still developing and don't have the foresight that adults have, might think, well, I'm going to do an action to get attention, to let people know that I'm having a difficult time. And they might inadvertently end up taking their own life. So they might say, yo, I'm going to take some pills and then I'm just mad and people will now know how upset I am. But they don't know exactly, not necessarily, how much damage that can do. So for instance, if a young person is on, let's say Prozac or some serotonin re-up intake inhibitor, which is just a medication that releases more serotonin in the brain and makes us feel somewhat better. Say that a kid is feeling really down and really depressed, maybe not even been wanting to do something as an action to harm themselves or to let other people know, but knows that when I take my Prozac, I feel better. So today was a really hard day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 20 of my Prozac pills. Well, that can lead to something called serotonin syndrome, and that can actually damage the brain and perhaps kill somebody. There's all these different factors, and it all kind of relates to impulsivity and not understanding, being able to see in the future. So the Child Youth Crisis Services, is it about mental illness or is it just about when a child or a young person is in crisis? So it's mainly for crisis services. But if there's a family or child and they don't know what to do in that situation, because one in five people have a mental illness. One in 10 are a chronic mental illness issue. And if they don't know what to do in that situation, they might deem that as a crisis, whereas the crisis team might not see it as a crisis because perhaps that individual is not at what we call imminent risk. The family's still in panic and they don't know what to do. So they can always come to our walk-in center. We can always see them. And we always have people 24-7 available on the phone. So they can always call our number. And that number is 615-726-0125. And that's for all ages, not just children and adolescents, but also adults. Can call 24 hours a day. If they don't know what to do, they can ask questions. We can help come up with a plan, whether that's setting up an outpatient appointment or perhaps we need to see that person. What is that? Is that a crisis line number? What is that number? It is. It is the 24-hour, seven-day-a-week crisis number for Davidson County. The official one for the entire county? For the whole county. And it's what? 615-726-0125. Perhaps one of your listeners is from out of county. They can still call that number and we can 
direct them to their crisis team for their county. I thought 2447444 was the crisis line. What is that? That is a 24-hour talk line. What's the difference? The difference is is that you're not going to get a crisis assessment. You're able to call that number 24 hours a day and talk about whatever. If you just need to vent, if you are just having some difficulty and need to just process the type of situation that they're going through, mm-hmm. they can call that number. But if you're at what you feel like is imminent risk, you cannot keep yourself safe or you're fearful for a family member or a friend or there's an immediate emergency that needs to take place, that's when they should call the crisis line. Unless it's extremely violent or if somebody has taken an overdose or their physical health might be at danger, Mm -hmm. then they need to call 911. You talk about keeping them safe. You mean from injury to themselves or to others? Exactly, yeah. And sometimes that looks like, say that there's somebody that has schizophrenia and they're just responding to their hallucinations and their whole world is different than ours, but their perception is their reality. Right. And they might be so focused on that that they no longer are sleeping They are no longer eating. They're no longer bathing. That person's at imminent risk. Their health is, if you're not eating and you're not sleeping, your life's in danger. So that would be another time that we would be involved. And you obviously would call a talk line to to figure out how to do that. People aren't really familiar with mental health. It's just something that we don't tend to talk about. There's some stigma to that. And I think although things have improved over the years, there's still that stigma. And one of the things is people don't think that young people can have psychosis. And that's not true. There are kids as young as seven that I've seen that are starting to already show symptoms of schizophrenia and the turmoil that that throws the whole family into, where they suddenly have to protect their other children from this individual who is having all of these delusions and psychosis and attempting to kill their siblings. And how do you keep the whole family system safe? And there's just a lot of things people just don't know about mental health. And I think it's good to create an environment where it's okay to talk about it, to ask questions so that things don't get to the point where they're in a crisis, hopefully. But if they are, then that's what we're here for. If they call 615-726-0125 and say, I'm not in a crisis right now, but I need to know what to do next. Absolutely. That's okay. Oh, absolutely. Call 24 hours a day. It's better to ask than to wait and have something happen. We want to try to prevent crisis. And what is a mental health cooperative? So mental health cooperative has been around for about 21 years, and they offer a bunch of different services. So one of those services can be individual therapy, can also meet with a psychiatrist for medication management. We also have a pharmacy on site. We also have case management services. So these are individuals that maybe need help in getting disability, uh, housing issues, help with food stamps, those types of things. And the consumers that the mental health cooperative typically sees are individuals that are living at a poverty line or perhaps below a poverty line. We also have a homeless outreach team involved and of course our crisis services. We've saved families $10,000 already in the first month and that was with people not even really knowing about our walk-in center whereas before they would have gone through an emergency department and on average a ER visit is $1,000 per visit. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. How do people find you? Well, we get lots of referrals. So doctor offices will contact us. Police will contact us. Schools will contact us. Family members. So we're seeing a lot of individuals from a lot of different referral sources. So where is the walk-in clinic? It's right in Metro Center at the Mental Health Cooperative Building, which is right near Starbucks there in Metro Center. And so if I'm Googling it, I look for? Mental Health Cooperative. Mental Health Cooperative. I can call the crisis line 24 hours a day. Absolutely. 24-7. 24-7. And that number again? 615-726-0125. Anything else that I've neglected to ask that you think is important to add? It's important that everybody knows that this is a state-funded program. So the crisis assessment is free for all of Davidson County. Now, after we see an individual or family in crisis, we can then help determine what needs to take place after. So if they need help, maybe they need therapy or see a psychiatrist, we can help give them those resources and even perhaps set up appointments regardless of what type of insurance they have or even if they're uninsured. It's important that people know that it's okay to ask for help. A lot of times people want to do this on their own. They feel ashamed and there's no reason that you should. People don't understand that it's parallel to like a physical illness. So if you hurt your leg, 
you wouldn't keep hobbling around and suffering and making things worse. You need assistance. Maybe it's a cast or a crutch for people to just help you through as you heal and get stronger. And then you can go on your way walking again. Same with mental health. Sometimes emotionally, we don't have the energy to do it. And we need other people to help guide us and get us to where we need to be so that we can get that adequate treatment so that we can start walking and continuing on with our journey again. Thank you so much. You can read more about today's topic on our Focus webpage. And if you have any questions or comments, or if you have an idea for the show, you can always email us at focus at mix929.com. Thanks again for listening today. Make sure you join us again next week for Focus. Focus.